this telephone call this day was uh, Andrew calling and saying, what are you doing? I said, well, it's strange you should ask. I'd just driven past his house, which is just up here in, in John Street, because I had a place over um, an apartment down further here at Cottesloe at the time. And I was on my way home. And he said, turn around, come back. I said, I've got an idea. So I turned around, parked outside his John Street house, went inside. The sport of athletics in Australia was having quite a lot of difficulty. It, it was running out of money. It had different states um, representing their state on the national board instead of representing the interests of the sport. Um, they'd become bankrupt uh, financially and become bankrupt in the sense of being able to do things. So um, they thought about putting a top businessman in to become president of Athletics Australia. And I don't know how they did it, but they got Andrew Forrest as the president. And he said, um, I've got an idea. Um, would you like a glass of scotch? And we each had a glass of scotch each and he said, I've got this idea about starting an iron ore business. Would you like to be part of it? And I said, sounds great to me. He said, um, and this was the first time I remember, he said, I also like people working with me to have skin in the game. I said, I don't have much skin at the moment. I've only got $80,000. He says, I'll take it. <laughs> I led the team that did the due diligence for Lucadia to determine whether or not they should make a $400 million investment in, in Fortescue. It would have been one of the biggest investments that uh, Lucadia had made in its history, and so they were very, very uh, careful. And I think it may well have been after one of those meetings, we were flying back to Perth, um, and we were sitting in the same two chairs and uh, chatting away, and he said, now you've moved to Perth, because I've just gone back there. Um, what are you intending to do? And I said, well, I've got a couple of boards in the Eastern States, and um, I think I was on three Eastern States boards at the stage, and I said, I've got to spend a bit of time flying across to the East. Probably, yeah, I'd like a board, in, uh, board appointment in Western Australia. And he said, oh, look, I've got this little thing I just sort of started up. Um, it should be a bit of fun. Uh, would you like to be a director of that? I said, sure. So that's the way it happened. <laughs> this little thing that's going to give us a bit of fun turned out to be this magnificent company, Fortescue Metals Group. We were driving to Port Hedland and Andrew was explaining to me where this future port would be built. And having stayed up late the night before reading the environmental reports, I wanted to let him know that I was aware of some of the problems he was facing. And as we were driving out to, uh, to what would be the future port in Port Hedland, I said, Andrew, I understand you have some problems with some mandrakes. And he pulled over the car and said, I don't know what you're talking about. And I said, right there in the report, it said that uh, you're going to have to destroy some mandrakes in order to build this port. And he got out a satellite phone and called somebody back in the office and just ripped into him. Why was he finding out about this environmental problem from a guy doing due diligence and where were the mandrakes? And he got somebody else on the phone and let them know that he wasn't happy about not knowing about the mandrakes. And, and he paused and listened and put the phone off to the side and he said, you don't mean mangroves, do you? And I said, oh yeah, yeah, it was mangroves. And he apologized, hung up the phone and referred to me with some colloquial phrase that suggested I was a dope and we drove off and he showed me the difference between a, a mangrove and a mandrake. <laughs> So I, I had to give a presentation. I don't remember exactly what I said, but I do remember saying, we choose to do things in life that we remember and that are important to us because they're hard to do. We don't choose the things that satisfy us because they're easy to do. So this is hard. This is a hard thing to do. But by God, what a fantastic way of building a team to face this hardship together to come up with the solutions together and to move forward out of it all together. Um, so he would sort of, just by virtue of his, uh, his ruthlessness on costs, um, his positiveness on innovation and new ways of doing things, um, the culture that developed even in the very early days was, uh, was very, very different to a bureaucratic, highly systematised approach. We want you to take risks. We'll support you in taking risks. We expect you to make mistakes. Get on with it. It was great. I think to me, the greatest thrill uh, is being part of 
the successful outcome of all those endeavours. And seeing, seeing the look on everybody's face, um, you know, it, it's, it was a cultural journey um, of which we're all very proud. And, and while at times we, we slipped and tripped and um, we never stopped climbing, we never stopped getting better at it. And we never will. And I think that's the biggest strength Fortescue has, is to keep the target out there and to keep going forward towards it because the satisfaction in achieving it is one of the best feelings in the world.